good morning. It's Jake here. I'm on my way to work on November 17th of 2022. Um, for those of you who always think Arizona is hot, uh, it is the current beautiful, bright, sunny day with clear skies at 23 degrees. But that's not why I'm on here. Um, I wanted to make this video and subsequent videos for primarily for myself so that I would remember the process of what I'm about to go through and then uh, also for anybody else who's going through it too to just be an honest and transparent um, about my experience maybe encourage other people in the process as well so uh, some backstory always struggled with my weight. If you have been a friend with me on Facebook or in person or whatever for a long time you've seen, I've tried a bunch of different things to try to uh, rectify that problem. Everything from your classic counting calories and exercising a ton to uh, Atkins to uh, Isogenics I just, I've tried everything and uh, what I've learned through that process in other areas of my life is I have a little bit of um, an addictive personality to where when I first start something, I'm really, really good at it. And uh, I jump in and go crazy with it. So, uh, for example, when I started Isogenics, I lost 50, 60 pounds, was pretty militant about it. Um, but then when I was pretty much had enough, I had enough. And so I stopped doing it and I gained all the weight back. And so, <coughs> um, I think it was back in 2017, um, Jen had told me that, uh, I was stopping breathing in the middle of the night when I was sleeping. Um, so I called my doctor and my doctor set me up with, uh, an at home test to test for sleep apnea and when the results came back um, I can't remember what they call them I think they call them events uh, I had something like 40 to 50 events in an hour which I think anything over 15 is considered severe maybe it's 20 uh, needless to say uh, I had pretty severe sleep apnea still do and I was not getting really great sleep so I started uh, trying to learn how to use a CPAP mask, which is one of the most awful things you could ever have to learn how to do. And uh, I really struggled with it, couldn't get it, couldn't get it. And um, ended up going to a specialist, a uh, pulmonologist, uh, just to see if they could help me with some techniques or change the pressure of the airflow. And uh, I had told him that my goal was just to lose some weight so that the sleep apnea would go away. Um, and he was pretty, I don't know if harsh is the right word, he was pretty abrupt. And he said, yeah, how's that working for you? It kind of caught me off guard and I said, well, it's not working super well. I mean, I tend to lose weight pretty easily, but then I just kind of put it back on. And he processed with me how many, how many times I'd done that in the last 10 years and it's definitely too many. And he says, well, you can keep trying to do that, but he said, you're going to kill yourself and kill your heart in the process. He said, what you really need to do is have surgery. And I said, surgery for what? He says, you need to have uh, weight loss surgery, um, which I was dead set against at the time. Um, he said, you can try as hard as you want, but he said, you're, he said, the only way that you're going to successfully uh, have an opportunity to lose the weight, keep the weight off, and not have to worry about sleep apnea anymore is if you have some sort of weight loss surgery. So I started thinking about it, looking into it. I really was against it. I used to always um, think that people who had surgery to lose weight were taking the easy way out, that it was cheating. Um, and so I really didn't, I really wasn't uh, on board with it. Um, I had a couple other people in my life in the next year, two years that um, had decided to get weight loss surgery and uh, kind of watch their journeys a little bit. 
Um, kept doing some more reading and learning about it. And in probably mid-2019, I decided I was at least going to explore a program that uh, was kind of holistic. And so I um, signed up for a medical weight loss program in Worcester, Massachusetts. That's where we were at the time. And uh, it was a thing where I had to do counseling for six months um, in a group setting. I had to do nutrition counseling for six months. Um, and I had the option if I wanted to at the end to have surgery, but it wasn't a program that was necessarily just for people to have surgery. It was a program for people to um, just kind of have support around losing weight and lear learning healthy patterns um, around their food. So what I learned through that process is that uh, not only do I have the addictive personality, apologize for that son, um, but I also have a pretty unhealthy emotional relationship with food. Um, if I'm being, if I'm celebrating, it's food. If I am frustrated, um, it's food. If, it, if I'm depressed and sad, it's food. Um, which would make sense why I have such an issue with my weight. Uh, so about halfway through that process in 2019, I decided that I was going to go through with having surgery. Um, and I was just about to be cleared to do it. Um, I took a missions trip to Puerto Rico in late February of 2019, or 2020, I'm sorry. And uh, returned with plans to get cleared and have surgery in the next month. If you're tracking, that would have been March of 2020, and nothing happened in March of 2020. So um, I had lost in the supervised portion of the counseling. I probably lost 20 or 30 pounds at that point, um, and I thought I was just going to be all right. I'd learned some good tools, and I'd be fine. So fast forward here to now. I'm in 2022. We've moved from Massachusetts to Arizona, which has been amazing, and we absolutely love it here. Um, but I've gained all of that weight back, and then some. I'm the heaviest I've ever been. Um, and so back in July of this year, I re-engaged with a program here, and I am working towards having um, weight loss surgery again. So... Uh, Yesterday, I wanted to make this video yesterday, but I didn't have my AirPods and the sound of the car was obnoxious, so I waited. Yesterday, I had my two-week pre-op appointment. Um, on November 29th, I will be heading into surgery to have uh, a gastric bypass performed. So uh, today, or actually yesterday, started uh, my pre-op diet, which is wonderful liquids for two weeks. Should be fun. Um, and then uh, this will be my meal of choice probably for the next two months uh, as I kind of recover from that and get back to um, able to eat solid food again. So um, I just want to kind of speak to a couple of different things before I wrap this up. Um, kind of two different groups of people. One being anybody who's considering doing um, weight loss surgery in, in that it's different for every person. Um, it's not right for every person. Um, for me, realizing that I have a poor relationship with food, um, the reason I'm doing a gastric bypass is because it gives me a forced period of time um, where I can't have that bad relationship with food. I have to do the hard mental work through counseling and therapy to kind of rewire my brain in a way so that um, food is not my go-to. Uh, it's not going to take care of my addictive personality. I still have an addictive personality. It's just I need to channel that into something else so that, you know, as my body adjusts, um, I don't just start eating a ton of food again and gaining it all back. So, um, that may not be the process for you. Uh, 
Uh, but I would say if you're thinking about doing this and you think it's just a quick fix, that it's going to be easy. Um, yeah, you have no idea what you're talking about. Um, this is not going to be an easy process. Uh, the restrictions on what you can eat, how much you can eat, uh, pre and post surgery um, are insane. And uh, yeah, you lose weight quickly because your body can't take all of those things in that you were used to taking in. Um, but you also have the issue of when you take in things that your body doesn't want to take in, you feel really terrible. Um, things like dumping syndrome where you literally feel like you want to die. Um, your body will just throw stuff back up because there's not enough room for you to take in food. Um, certain foods that you've always loved to eat, even ones that would be considered healthy, your body may not like afterwards. Um, I don't know what those will be for me. Um, and I will definitely continue to process this through mostly for myself to be able to look back and remember. Um, hopefully when I get to the point where I can eat what I want, um, these videos will help me remember to not just eat what I want, but to eat the right things. So, uh, so that's the first group. The second group is for the people who are going to be, um, negative about me doing weight loss surgery. Uh, you are completely entitled to what you think and what you feel about it. Um, like I mentioned to the first group, um, I used to think this was the easy way out. Um, and I can tell you from talking with people who have done it as well as looking at what I need to do, um, it'd be a lot easier to lose weight by just uh, not having to have surgery. Um, the side effects and uh, restrictions and all of those things, if I could have done this without that, it would have been a lot easier and much more preferred. So. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to change your mind. That's fine. I, I don't really care if I change your mind. Um, but I would request that if uh, you don't really have anything that's positive to say uh, through the process, that you just keep those opinions to yourself. Um, I understand that uh, there's the large possibility that I'll go through the process and gain all my weight back. I know that. Um, from a very cold and cynical position, I decided that even if I can get um, five years more of my life because I had a five years of being healthy, um, that that's worth it for me to be around for my family and for my kids. Um, that may not be worth it for you. You may not think it's worth it. That's fine. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're, if you're not going to be encouraging and you don't feel like uh, you can support what I'm doing through the process, then, you know, just scroll by these videos. Don't watch them. Uh, don't leave nasty comments in the comment section. Um, I have spent a lot of time since the middle of 2019 talking with people who are medical experts in this field, watching other people who have gone through it, both positive experiences and bad. Um, I know what I'm getting into. Uh, I know it's not going to be easy. Um, I know I wish I could do it a different way. But uh, I also know that just like the pulmonologist told me in 2017, how's that working for you? Um, so I'm going to go a different path. Uh, appreciate everybody who wants to chime in and just give words of encouragement. Um, I'm going to do my best, again, mostly for myself to just kind of um, process through this through some video so that I can remember this process years from now and hopefully keep myself headed in the right direction. Um, if you do have any questions, you're going through this yourself, considering going through it. Um, I by no means am an expert in the field, but uh, would be more than willing to talk with you and uh, just encourage you to do your own work. So that's it. Um, I got 12 more days of liquid diet and my surgery date is November 29th um, so I'll see if I can update you in about a week about how much I'm loving just drinking these protein shakes and uh, we'll be uh, updating soon alright bye bye